Hi everyone, this is Ravina. Welcome back to Sudokoda. Today we are going to talk about uh, problem number 11, which is container with most water. Let's start by reading the problem here. It says that you are given an array, integer array height of length n. There are n vertical lines drawn such that two endpoints of the ith line are i, comma 0 and i, comma height of i. Find two lines that together with an x axis form a container such that the container contains the most water. Return the maximum amount of water a container can store. Notice you may not slant the container. Okay, so let's start by understanding uh, what the problem statement says. It says that you have been given uh, some towers here, some lines, vertical lines, which are uh, in this graph. And you have to imagine that if you try in and fill in water between these lines, which two lines will help you store most water? Let's see how we can understand it better with the help of an example. Uh, let me open my notepad here. Okay, so uh, I have a similar example. Uh, in my example here, uh, I have you know some lines, some bars. You can uh, think of them as bars. Actually, you can think of them as walls. And suppose you have water. And now you want to add water to these um, between these walls to ensure which two walls will you choose so that it uh, actually stores more water. So one thing would be if I choose one uh, and then if I choose take the last uh, here. So if I take that, then I will be filling out water like this. And that will actually be the wall is one length uh, of one length. So one length. And then how many hops am I getting? So basically, this, these consider these as one line apart, one one point apart. So it will be one into how many uh, gaps are here? One, two, three, four, five. So one into five, which is five. So I can say store five liters of water in here. If I consider this particular bar and say I have this bar, so what happens then? How much water can I store at that point? If I look at that, um, my water content will be till here and then this whole area. So this whole area, that means uh, these two bars are of five length, right? So five into how many uh, passages are there? Three, five into three, 15. So if you do this for each and every bar and do permutation and combination, you'll be able to find which two, con uh, two lines will hold the most water. And that's what we are going to try and solve today. So let me get rid of my water. Okay, so let's see how we can solve this. Um, I'm going to start. I'm going to do it using um, two variables, a left one and a right one. And what I'm going to do is, um, once I have, I'm going to have a max area variable for myself. And when I find a variable where it stores the most water, I'm going to update my max area with a simple twist. I am going to, uh, based on if whether my particular line is smaller, I am going to shift that line. So let me tell you, uh, let me first um, make you understand what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to have a left variable. So my left is going to be my index 0, so 0. My right variable would be pointing at the end of the line. So my r is here, my l is here. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is of the, the last index is 5, so my r will now be 5. I'm going to have a max area variable which is going to be uh, pointed to minus infinity right now so we have to calculate max area max area that means my um, I, uh, so it should be in something positive that is why i'm going to initial i'm going to initialize my variable to minus infinity if i would have been asked to calculate minimum area i would have initialized my max uh, my area to plus infinity Okay, so once I have these three variables in place, I'm going to uh, do this loop while my L is less than R. While my L is less than R, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how much area uh, am I getting. So my area would really be uh, my minimum 
of uh, I, of these two, right? When you want to store water, you'll always take minimum because that's that's how that's the length that you're gonna get. That is gonna be your top uh, number. So minimum of my LNR. So not my LNR, my values at index LNR. So suppose H of L and H of R. I'm going to take minimum of that and I'm going to multiply it with the distance. Remember, that's what we did. We take minimum of those two bars and then we multiply it with the distance that's there between them so that we understand what volume are we going to store in it. So that is really going to be R minus L because R minus L are those indexes and uh, the distance between them will really be the subtraction of the two. Once we calculate this particular thing, this particular area, uh, we are going to check if this area is actually greater than the max area that we have. So max area will really be max of this particular area or the max area. If that is true, then I'm going to update it. Now, how I'm going to proceed? So if I have, so suppose in our example, uh, I have L as one. Uh, my, uh, my first element is one and the last is three. The bar length is three. When I calculate the minimum area, uh, when I calculate area, area is going to be minimum of H or R. So minimum of one or three, minimum is one. So it's going to be one. And uh, it's going to be multiplied with R minus L. So five minus uh, zero is five. So one into five is five. Now I got my area, max area from minus infinity to five. How, uh, which one should I, should I decrease my R or should I increase my L? Well, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, first find out which one has a minimum, uh, which one is lesser. So my L is actually less than R. So I'm going to increment my L. If my R would have been less than L, then I would have decrement my R. So I would have changed it accordingly. So since my L is less than R, I'm going to increment it. So my L is going to be here. My L is going to be one. Okay. Now I'm going to repeat this procedure. I'm going to calculate area. Area is going to be minimum of L and R. So minimum of six and three, uh, which is three. So three into R minus L. So R is five, L is one. Five minus one is four. So three into four, three fours are 12. I'm going to check is my max area less than the area that I calculated? Yes, then I'm going to update my max area. My max area is going to be 12. Cool. Uh, now I'm going to check is my L less than R? Uh, no, my L is not less than R. That means uh, so I have to decrement my R. So I have to point my R here. So my R becomes 4. Now I again calculate area. Uh, my area would be 6 minus 5. Uh, sorry, minimum of 5 and 6, which is 5. So 5 into R minus L. R is 4. L is 1. So 4 minus 1, 3. So 5 into 3, which is 15. Is my max area less than the area that I have? Yes. I'm going to update it with 15. I'm going to check which one is lesser. Is, uh, is my L less than R? No. My R is less than L. So I'm going to decrement my R. My R is going to be pointing at 3, uh, at uh, the third index. So once I do that, I'm going to again calculate which one is minimum 6 and 3, 3. So it's going to be 3. R minus L, 3 minus 1 is 2, 3 into 2 is 6. And then I'm going to check, is my max area actually less than the area that I calculated? No. So I'm going to keep 15. I'm going to check which one is lesser. Is R less than L? Yes. Okay. Decrement my R. My R is pointing here now. My R becomes 2. Uh, Minimum of six and four is four, so four. And R minus L, two minus one is one. So my area becomes four. Is my mini, uh, max area less than the area that I calculated? No, I'm gonna keep my max area. And then at this point, I'm going to check if my R is less than L, yes. I'm going to decrement my R further, but my while loop is while my L is less than R. So this is gonna terminate right here. And I got my max area and I'm going to return that max area. So let's see how we can convert this into code now. First, I need my L, R and my max area. 
So my L is going to be zero. My R is actually going to be length of my height uh, minus one. And my max area, my max area is going to be minus infinity. So I'm going to do float of minus float of minus I and F. That's how you write minus infinity in Python. Okay, so uh, the first thing I need a while loop while my L is less than R. While my L is less than R, I'm going to calculate my area. So my area is going to be minimum of uh, height of height of L, uh, comma height of R. And then I'm going to multiply that with my R minus L. Once I do that, I'm going to check if my max area is less than my max area. Uh, I'm going to basically take the maximum of the two area and max area. So I can really write area comma max area. Okay. Now I have to check if my left height is less than the right height. So I'm going to do that. My height of L is... Uh, less than my height of r if that is the case then i am going to check i'm going to actually increment my l so l is going to be plus one else my r is going to be decremented i'm going to decrement my r pointer in the end i want to return my max area let me try and run it okay let me try and submit So the solution was accepted. Now let's talk about the space and time complexity of this problem. So I'm going through, first let's talk about the time complexity. For time complexity, it's while L is less than R and um, I'm do, going through each and every sequence. So uh, here the time complexity is actually O of N because I uh, am going through each and every element. Uh, and the space complexity here is actually constant because the three variables that I'm using are actually holding just constants zero and you know this index and the max area. So that is going to store constant. So my time complexity is O of n and my space complexity is a constant, which is O of one. So uh, this uh, particular solution is going to be on my GitHub channel. I'll include the link in the description below and I uh, I'm also on Discord, so feel free to join my Discord channel and give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and let me know, did you like this solution? And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.